you going? Chris Brown? I am, yeah. How are you, mate? I'm really pleased to see you. Yeah, what have we got here? Chris has just received an urgent call from staff at a high-rise shopping centre in Bondi Junction. Man, he's a peregrine falcon. I know. I've got to say, I'm amazed that they've managed to catch him and catch him so effectively. These guys normally put up one hell of a fight. They've got huge talons, a very powerful beak. They'll shred you if they get a chance. Really? So you've seen him before. Oh, mate, he's part of the family up here. The, the, the cleaners have named him. It's, 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 that's either Frank or Judy. We don't know which one it is. Bruce Campbell is the security manager. He or she usually lives on that tower, okay. and then the pair that are mating around here. On the rooftop, Bruce shows Chris where the family of peregrine falcons has made its home. Here we go. It's coming out of the sun now. Right. Straight down. Jeez, it's fast. Another one. These birds are lethal killing machines and can fly at a speed of more than 200 kilometres per hour. So that's the mate right there? That's the mate, yeah. So the nest is over here? Yeah. Chris needs to take the sick bird to the clinic for treatment, but Bruce is worried the patient is leaving behind a mate and chicks. We have heard the babies up there. We haven't heard them for the last couple of days. There's nothing there, is there? No. He looks like a young adult, um, just based around his plumage. So why he's here, why he is so sick, it's all a bit of a mystery. He's important to us. He's very important to us, this bird. I'll talk to you soon, though. Take care, Doc. Catch you soon. from the retriever they're here that is coming out of the car. They're the radiographs. Is this the bloated one? Yeah, it's bloated. The owner's really distressed. Ooh, I think dog will be a bit distressed too. Mm. That's got to be a GDB for sure. That's full of air and that looks like she's got a bit of a twist in it. So let's go find her. OK. Jasmine. X-rays show six-year-old Jasmine has a deadly condition called gastric dilation volvulus, where the stomach twists and stops blood getting to the heart. If we don't do something now, she'll die. I mean, it's simple as that. I didn't feed her till 12 o'clock last night. Then she threw up between 1 and 1.30. I let her outside, and she's a great hunter. Right. She disappeared for about an hour and then came back. Right. And she threw up another three times during the night. By morning, Jasmine's stomach had blown up. I can't tell what I have to receive. You've done them before. Can't. You've right? Plenty. And you have yeah. had success, some success. Oh. I would say 80 to 90 per cent of dogs do very well. Right. There's a good reason for Ross's interrogation. Two years ago, he lost another curly coated retriever to the killer condition. As long as I'm not getting some intern working on it, you know, or something like this, you know. No. I'll, I'll, I'll because, be the one. Know, obviously, I don't know you guys. You know. No, no, I appreciate it. You've been it. recommended and all that. Yeah, know. yeah. No, no, I'll be doing the surgery. I'm a specialist. I've mm, done that. Okay. Hundreds. Well, okay. That's fine. The best thing we can do for now is get some of that air out and the best way to do that is to literally stick a needle or a trocar in there and, and let it hiss out like a balloon empty. Jersey, Jersey, Jersey. That's what I wanted to do. You can hear that? Right. So we're just sort of getting all that gas yep, out yep, of there yep. so they'll just make it feel much more comfortable. What causes GDVs, there's a whole lot of things but it is associated Often when they've had a, a meal, then they go and run around a bit. And for whatever reason, maybe the stomach's a bit heavy and it just flips on itself, twists, and as soon as it does that, as I said, the stomach just starts blowing up, it can't empty, and then they very, very rapidly decline. So, yeah, I mean, it is difficult, and, and especially with Ross, he is on edge and he, he's pushing to say, you know, it's going to be OK, and I can't promise that. Really, I, I don't know how bad she is inside until I'm in there and I could get in there and find that her stomach's black and most of it's died, and that's awful. I mean, her, her chances of survival, if that's the case, it's just woeful. Good luck. Okay. Thanks, Ross. Good luck always helps. Mm. We'll see how we go. Okay. I don't think that's pain that he's responding to there. No, I think he's just frightened. Yeah. Chris is back at the clinic investigating why Frank the falcon can no longer fly. When you first get presented a big bird like this, you'd be thinking that, hey, it's, it's flown into a window or, or it's had an injury whilst it's been flying. But I can't see anything there. There are no fractures that I can feel in his wings. His legs feel pretty much intact. He just feels a bit skinny. So it's a bit of a mystery as to why he's now so ill that he can't even get up into the sky. 
falcon yoga. <laughs> it appears Frank is suffering from a combination of exhaustion and malnourishment. See in the corner of the mouth? Yeah, I do. What? Yeah. Looks like a big plaque of, of fungus, mm -hmm. so thrush. Mm -hmm. And that is a classic sign of, of weakness in birds. Yes, yeah. So that little yeast, if it gets a chance, just grabs hold of their immune mm. system if it, if it is weakened. Yeah. And it starts to grow and makes feeding difficult. Yeah. And it can stamp down. It compromises the throat a little bit, yeah. yeah. Frank needs antifungal medication and antibiotics immediately. His immune system has to do the rest. The, the medication will help, but it's up to Frankie. Chris is also concerned about the condition of Frank's mate and chicks still at the top of the tower. What's happening with those chicks? Are they being cared for? Are they in good health? Are they unable to be fed without Frankie being there? He's saying feed me, I'm hungry. <laughs> good boy. It's one way to keep you quiet. Yeah, well, that's good. I think that's um, confirmed the fact he's a male. Definitely. Food he's, does keep well, him quiet. Plus, plus he's mouthy as well. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. Frank the Falcon, rescued from a Bondi shopping centre, is now getting stuck into a feed of raw meat. I guess what I'm most happy about right now is the fact that he's a lot more alert, he's a lot more feisty, he's, he's pecky at my finger, and he's really keen on this meat. Ah, that was me. <laughs> finger. It's twisted 180 degrees on its axis, so it's, you know, it's what we expected. Um, so I've just got to get in there and flick it back into the right position, then we can have a look at what the stomach's doing and see if it's damaged at all. At Bondi's so, Referral Hospital, Sash, Andrew's attempting to save Jasmine from a deadly, twisted stomach. Well done, Andrew. No, the stomach's a bit bruised, but um, considering she's potentially been bloated for about 12 hours, it's actually remarkably good. If we didn't get onto this very quickly and didn't operate, she'd die. I think another hour or so and she'd have been collapsed in a heap on the ground. time is the essence and that's where I've fallen down you know with this one. Ross has already lost one pet Axel to the killer condition. You know he's on my screen save or something so I can still say hello to him. You know he was something really special. Now Andrew needs to make sure Jasmine never suffers another attack. He stitches her stomach to the wall of the abdomen so it can't move. Blood pressure's been all right? Still? And I think your chances are fantastic now, but I always worry for that first 24 hour period. Mm. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we hang in there. Goes on, doesn't it? Because, uh, as I say, that's what happened with the, the other one. We took him home. And it was as if he just wanted to say goodbye to us, you know? It was dreadful. So we'll just see. Mm, she's not with us, is she? Yeah, okay. Mm. Hang in there, Jazzy. Mm. Yeah, she's okay. She's had better days. Mm. Mm. So this is where the um, action's happening? Yes, this is where they live. They're free range in the backyard. After feeding Frank, Chris is on the road to answer an SOS call from Linda. So he just hassles her and just... Yes. When he's not in his little chastity cage, he, he's... Yes, yes, he jumps there. on her a lot. Um, he tries to make babies. Do you want me to get him out? I wouldn't mind seeing it. Bunny's fallen in love with his Flemish giant flatmate. He just won't leave five-year-old Archelina alone. So, Chris, you can see the problems we're having. Fairly, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a, it's a pretty subtle gesture that Bunny... <laughs> Naughty Bunny. Naughty boy. Naughty. The thing about rabbits is they grow up very fast. They're sexually mature from eight weeks of age. He's four months of age, so he's almost in his prime. But, Chris, you must know yourself how awful it is when you get un unwanted Spl attention from the opposite sex. I so know, it's it horrible, isn't it? I wouldn't it? know what you're talking about. I've never had unwanted attention of, of that variety. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you mean. <laughs> Poor Archie, look. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> and it gets very tiresome oh. for Archie. <laughs> oh dear, Bunny, stop it. So we need to castrate him. Okay, wow. And he, yeah. But he's a bit small, isn't he? No, 
I, I, they're there. They're there, they're there. Oh, they're That's there. good. Okay. Yeah. Oop, he doesn't like that. So the only real solution here is the snip. Get rid of those hormones altogether and hopefully Bunny will start behaving himself. But that's no guarantee. You see, this could be dominance related rather than hormone related. If that's the case, then Bunny needs a new address. <laughs> Bunny, put it away. So Chris, you're not going to believe this. I think this is the partner to the Falcon. You're kidding. No. Oh, God. In a strange twist of fate, a second falcon has been rescued from their home at the top of a Bondi shopping centre. Gee, she's feisty. Just like her partner Frank, Judy can't fly. But despite her weak condition, she's putting up a good fight. This is a real handful, she's a real regular and, and also you get, it, you get it wrong and she launches those talons, talons or your or a beak right, right into you. She really doesn't have much, much to her body. She's really skinny. To get one peregrine falcon a year would be incredible. To get two in the space of a couple of days is truly remarkable. Frank is suffering from a thrush infection in the mouth, but Judy is showing no symptoms. Hey, you know, I hate to say it, but you've got to start thinking that they could have been poisoned. These are the greatest flies in the world, yet they can't even get off the ground. Something's going on. Frank, Judy, Judy, Frank, you know each other. I've got this nagging concern. If she's here, and if he's already here, who's looking after the babies? Those chicks now are all alone without anyone to care for them, and that's a big worry. Chris immediately contacted security manager Bruce Campbell, and they're now heading up to the Falcons' penthouse home. The chicks were heard recently, but there's been no, no sound of Two other members of this extended peregrine falcon family are becoming aggressive towards the intruders. They're double teaming into the sun and then swooping in. I don't feel safe up here. Can I get a helmet? All right, so we'll get over the edge here. Be glad to know I'm okay with heights. Are you sure, mate? Yeah. A pole cam has been rigged to try to locate the chicks. All right, so I might get you on the monitor if I can, Bruce. All right, mate, you got this? Yeah, I've got okay. that. I hope I've got it. It's yeah, there. go down a bit more. OK, left. Go left a bit. Yeah, how's that? Just down a little bit. We're 200 metres up, and the nest is down on a ledge 20 metres below us. It's a hell of a place to get to. Little bit, OK, stop, stop. You got oh, that's there? really good, mate. You can, uh, you can definitely see a nest. If the chicks are still alive, they've now been on their own for more than a day. Stop, stop there. Mate, it's pretty dark up the back. Yeah. Looks like there's a bone in there, lots of poo. The fact is, if we do see chicks down there alive, we've really got to swing into a full-on rescue operation straight away. Plenty of activity, plenty of bird, bird poo around. There's lots of bird poo, but I can't see any sign of life, unfortunately. No movement at all? No movement at all, mate. Very disappointing, yeah. Um, we have everything set up here with this uh, window cleaning module. And the plan was going to be to lower that down and uh, get right in there and we could have retrieved the chicks. It's sad, isn't it? So with no signs of life in that nest, my priority has to be mum and dad. Frank and Judy have to get better again. And if we can get them back up here, they've got many more years of breeding ahead. Very upset. Well, at least we've got it on video, huh? You can look back on the good days. Yes, yes. <laughs> at the clinic, the love struck bunny has arrived for his delicate operation. You look after him, won't you? I will, don't worry. <laughs> he is he's very um, special to us, despite his debauchery. He's very special, I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that I'm taking away his, uh, you know, his manhood, emasculating him. Same way my partner feels, really, most days. <laughs> Operating on a tiny subject like Bunny is difficult. He's got this ability, even under anaesthetic, to actually suck them back in. So you touch them and he'll subconsciously pull them back into his body. So once you've got one, you hold on to it. A 
That's it. One of the great careers cut tragically short. No more for Bunny. Now the big question is, has the desexing worked? Will the giant Archelina finally live a peaceful life? We won't know, probably even for another month or so, whether this has been a success. Oh, that's nice, huh? Good girl. How's your tummy? At Sash, Andrew's happy with Jasmine's progress, but still cautious. Good. The six-year-old was close to death with a twisted stomach. She's still not 100% out of the woods. I'm not going to promise anything to Ross until I'm, you know, a gazillion percent sure. Back at Bondi, Chris is ready to release the falcons. The fact is you can almost kill them with kindness. If you keep them in captivity for too long, they become quite unfit and they, they almost forget what is required to survive out there. Ah, yeah, that's really clamping down it. Oh. Oh. oh! Is this the thanks for the hospitality? Both Frank and Judy have been treated with antibiotics and appear to be much stronger. Clear for takeoff. But no one can predict if they still possess the will to fly. Hello, sweetheart. Time for you to go home. Come on, Shook. Here you go, hulk of girl. I don't have any food for you. Your dad might, though. A much happier Jasmine is about to be reunited with Ross. Oh, she's been such I a... think she realises now. Now she's got it, yeah. <laughs> Ross is finally convinced that Andrew was the right man for the job. And, you know, I actually went home and Googled um, Andrew. And, you know, I was satisfied with, you know, what, what had come up there. And he's obviously, you know, a really top vet. As soon as I saw what a stomach looked like, I thought, right, she'll be fine. I wasn't going to tell you that. No, that's Because you didn't want to hear it. No, no. It's, it's just a totally horrible thing to go through, and you feel guilty yourself that you've actually created the problem, because, you know, they just mean so much to you. You know, they're part of the family. Regular star, aren't you, Jazzy? Yeah. As for lover boy Bunny, the operation worked. And Archelina is one relieved rabbit. He doesn't seem to be very interested at all anymore. So he and Archie are just good friends now. It's purely platonic. Isn't it, Bun? Are we going to do it at the same time? No, we'll do one at a time. OK. And finally, the ultimate moment for Frank and Judy. They have to fly to survive. You recognise this, mate? Recognise that view anyway, wouldn't you? Frank is hesitant about his first leap of faith. You never know. You get here and you just never know what's going to happen. And right now he's just assessing the wind conditions. You know, yeah. wind out of the southeast at five knots, gusting up to seven. Put a, bit, put a bit of flap on the on the right rudder. Adjust the flaps. He's and... starting to perk up. Look, look at him. Oh, look at that, mate. That's Go awesome. On. Either way, that is fantastic. And soaring. Go, Frank. Look at him, mate. You got her. Yeah. She's not going to waste her time here. Now it's Judy's turn. Will this release be a complete success? Come on, gorgeous. Look at that. Come on, gorgeous, show us some wing. Judy's been on the ledge for more than five minutes and no sign of takeoff. But I think us being here as well is probably probably worrying a little bit. Do you want to back off a bit? Yes, yeah, a little bit. Turns out Judy just needs to answer another call of nature first. <laughs> Did you see that? I hope she doesn't backflip off. Very sorry about that. You've got to you've got to lessen your weight before you take exactly, off. Exactly, mate. Yeah, drop some ballast. <laughs> the reality is that their wings do stiffen up, and she just loses the fitness, and away she goes. <laughs> Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Good job, mate. Good work, mate. That's absolutely awesome. You love these, don't you? We do, mate. We love I them. Can tell. Yeah. I, I just work here. They live here, mate. This is yeah. their home, and this is just... It's fantastic, mate. Absolutely fantastic. Well done, mate. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. 
click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.